in the world, fangirls and fanboys. It is episode 60 of Electric Fan Cave on ElectricBeast.com, and you should be super excited. We know we are. We have the delightful and wickedly talented Martin McCann here to chat about his current projects, his past projects, and in light of all the trailers out this week, the wide world of movie franchises. I don't want to waste another minute of your time. Let's get to it. Martin, thanks for being good, here. That was a good, that was a good intro. <laughs> Thank you. I have yeah, a roll lately. Yeah. You've got that done. <laughs> Kristen I'm is done. usually the only one who compliments me on these, so it's really nice to get that from an outside source. And do you have you have you learned it off by heart, or do you read it from a page? Oh heavens, no! I definitely read it from a page. That's ah uh... uh, well, <laughs> you should. It won't be long until you can say it off by heart. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Martin. Not everybody in this chat is an actor, all right? Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I, I, know, I'm, I'm I took intro to acting. For non-majors, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kristen's a pro after intro to acting for non-majors, so. so I don't want to brag, but I'm like really good. I got an A, so. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Uh, how's it going over there? You're you're in. Where are you right now? I'm actually in London. London. I I was in New York a few days ago with the Tribeca Film Festival, and I just I got back two days. Well, no, what did I, I got back? Got back yesterday. Sorry. So I'm a little bit, still a little bit, sort of jet lagged, and um. But I had a ball, uh, yeah. you know, and got to see some good films and meet some lovely people. And the film that we did, The Survivalist, it was received quite well. It got five stars in the Time Out, Time Out review. And it's kind of one of those films that people really love it or they go, you know, it's great. It's a good film, but I don't want to sit through two hours of misery watching, <laughs> you know, people people starve to death on a farm so so it's you know yeah. it's it's a little bit like marmite i think you know <laughs> it has a very niche audience uh, for want of a better for want of a better pun sure. you know? yeah no i i can definitely see that and we want to want to hear all about this because this sounds like such an interesting uh film and i've read some of the reviews so far but it was it was clearly very hotly anticipated i mean you guys were on all the lists of like these are what you should be watching at tribeca mm. Mm. No, it's great. It's it, it. No, there's no doubting. It's a it's a well made film. It really is. Yeah, it's a absolutely. Well -made film. But uh, before we get into that, we should probably get to know you a little bit here. Um, you know, I think some of our audience probably is like, "Who's this guy?" Uh, and they don't know they've seen you in everything. Yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah, a hundred percent of them more more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Um, but I, I think everybody has seen you in things, uh, and they may just not you know know your name yet. Um, I would say. So we have a few things uh, to sort of get to know you a little better that we like to throw out to um, everyone who comes on this show. Kristen, what do we got? Yeah. So what we have for you is because we have a couple film franchises that are kind of being, you know, in the news lately, especially. Mm -hmm. Our question for you would be, if you could be in any film franchise, which would it be? Ooh. And who would you play? Oh, I, <laughs> I suppose. I mean, the dream would be to... Um, uh, I don't know. I'd love to play a bad guy in in one of the James Bond movies. I'd say that would Ooh. be an interesting role to, yeah. to land. And it's always, you know, the bad guys in the James Bond movies. You know, they're hit hit and miss, but when they do a, a good bad guy, they do it really well. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Well, so which... I suppose, yeah, a bad guy in James Bond. Yeah. Okay. What would be, like, your thing? Like, you know, a hat with a blade rim or, like, you know, th a Jaws or, like, what? Like, what would be your evil villain thing? Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, well, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Iron Teeth? Wait, has that already been done? Yeah, that, that was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's pretty don't compelling. Know. You'll have to think about that and get back to us on uh, a few. Were... Yeah, definitely. It'll take me all night to think about that. <laughs> you won't be in able like to sleep week, now. Get, yeah, in a week we get a message. He's like, okay, you guys, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I have I a gold it. finger. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> finger. That one's been done. Just kidding. No, <laughs> Um, okay, so do you have a favorite of the bad guys from the Bond movies? Um, I liked Mads Mikkelsen's character in Casino Royale. I thought yeah. that was a great, a great role. I, I thought you know he was just a kind of an egomaniac, yeah. Um, and he he does under pressure quite well. So even though bad guys, obviously the bad guys are always cool and tough, you could see him cracking underneath the surface. You know, yes. obviously when. Daniel Craig got the better of him at the card game and stuff, and I've and I've worked with Mads before. Oh man! I, I had a very small role in Clash of the Titans, which he was one of the main guys, and I got to play cards with him uh, in real life, and he was just a cool guy, a lovely guy, and I felt like Daniel Craig, obviously, when he was playing me cards. I was like, hey, wait a minute, James Bond has done this, and I've done this too. I'm kind of like James Bond at the moment. 
<laughs> is he okay? But Mads Mikkelsen is he like a little terrifying in real life, or is he just like g- gentle as can be? Oh, he's super cool, super charismatic, real yeah. good guy, um, nice guy, good actor, and uh, yeah. just yeah, just a really you know uh, an all round nice guy. He is. He's he's a cool guy. He strikes me as like he's just so intimidating. His roles are so like forceful and strong and mm-hmm. like in a mm-hmm. quiet way. I don't know. And so I feel like if I were to meet him, I would be somewhere between like ecstatic and I might cry. <laughs> Like. Uh, he's he's an amazing actor, and and, and it's only recently he's played sort of softer characters. He did a uh, a Danish film, or I think it was a Danish film. Um, I can't, what was the name of it? I think it, was it was the one. The Hunt. Yeah, the Hunt. That was it. And where he plays a teacher, um, you know, obviously accused in the wrong of uh, a very serious act, and you know he plays a lovely guy, a soft natured guy in that, and he does it quite well. Yeah, I, I actually haven't seen that, but I've heard wonderful things about it. So it's an amazing, it's an amazing film, a really, really well done film. Yeah, that'll get me over my Mads phobia. I've been watching too much Hannibal, so he just yeah. Terrible. Well, I haven't oh, watched that yet, so maybe uh, if I watch that, my my perception of him would change a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to don't want to view him as a uh, as a cannibalistic maniac. You know. Yeah, it, I mean, and the thing about that show is you watch it and like you're half really hungry because the food looks really good and then you're just like but it's people okay i'm starting to worry a little bit about you (laughs) but you know say no more sorry i swear you'd get it if you watched but uh, i'm like i I don't get it i'm Corey. i think i'm gonna have to go uh it's got weird it's got weird what else do we have what's our other well the other one we have is this other question is this what series of movies should they stop making either because they're terrible or because they're too good to reboot Ooh, um, uh, oh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, do what we can. I, you know, I, I, I didn't like the, uh, I didn't like the way they had made the Narnia films recently. Oh, um, yeah. good I, call. I, Cause I remember watching, I remember watching the BBC show, yes. uh, the Narnia many, many, many years ago with Aslan and, mm-hmm. and I, I just remember it being done so well and so magically so and then i watched the recent narnias and i probably i shouldn't say this because my friend ben ben barnes is in it but i just <laughs> thought it was you know ben was great in it but yeah I it's not his fault they, yeah it's not his fault hang on but they on. they there was something just lacking the magic mm. wasn't there yeah no i agree completely and those bbc ones are just it's hard to repeat the magic of those anything that bbc does it's hard to repeat the magic i feel like we should probably not try to make anything bbc does (laughs) once they've done it just let it be (laughs) as a rule don't let america touch it we're gonna kill it yeah stop ruining it it's not broke don't fix it Mm -hmm. exactly um although i don't know like how well those super hold up um in 2015 per se but i still Mm -hmm. think they were amazing it might be mm. one of those ones that's more like an, it's like, they hold up if you watch them as a child. Yeah, exactly. You know? So like the people who watch them as a child and then watch them, they're like, are you kidding me? They still have that magic because you remember, remember. that sort of. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of nostalgia there as well. Yeah, you know? exactly. But kids today would be like, Psha, there's nothing digital in this. This sucks. Uh, kids okay. these days. Exactly. What do they know? <laughs> yeah. Act, act, actors actually dressed up and playing animals. What is this crap? <laughs> It's true. Although I will say for the new Narnia movies, that did give us uh, James McAvoy as Mr. Tumnus, which I think um, everyone is thankful for. Yeah, true. <laughs> he was actually, uh, without doubt, one of the best things about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so good. That's a, that's a good answer. And uh, a very Northern uh, Ireland answer, you know, going straight <laughs> for the C.S. Lewis uh, remake. Yes, yes uh, a fellow, fellow Northern Irish man. Yeah. Um, that's great. Albeit a lot, a lot more intelligent than me, but still, I say, you know, share the same country as him, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't get him on the show, so we just we went with you instead. You know. Yeah, they, it's the first well, apparent, choice. He's, yeah, he's, he's he's hard to get these days. I know. What are you gonna do? It's that that ego yeah. that people get when they get famous. <laughs> I know. He's a he's an absolute diva, that man. <laughs> <laughs> well then, with those in mind. Uh, uh, I mean, I do want to ask though. Have you seen the trailers for uh, the all the recent things that are coming out, like Star Wars and um, what's it, Mad Max? Oh, uh, I mean, the yeah, Mad Max trailer looks amazing. The Star Wars trailer just has me, you know, 
I cannot wait to watch that film. <laughs> right. I cannot wait. I'm waiting with bit of breath on its release. I really am. Yeah. yeah. There's a really, really am. There's a surprising amount of, of grown men whose response to this uh, trailer was like, I cried. You know, it's just it's I know. that I know. powerful. I know. It's just, it just, it's, it's going to be, I, I've just got the feeling it's going to be, it's going to be one of the best yeah. Star Wars yet. I just, for some reason, I get that, that feeling, just the trailer and the sort of, the minimalism, but yet mm-hmm. the, I mean, it's quite minimalist in terms of the last three that were made, which was full yes. of, you know, uh, I don't know. It, it seemed like they tried really, really hard in terms of, obviously, you've got Jar Jar Banks and all, all those guys. And <laughs> I think this time they've, they've went a little bit more sort of, I don't know, artistic about it. And uh, I mean, the suspense is in the trailer. It just, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a work of genius. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, exercising a little bit of restraint, I think, is kind of what's and necessary. That's, that's it. That's what I'm. That's what I'm searching for. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's. I mean, I'm enthusiastic about it uh, and about Mad Max. And I mean, what else did we like? There's more trailers that came out this week that were for uh, other franchises. I don't know. There's a ton yeah, of well, them. Well, Batman versus Superman. Oh, yeah. In Jurassic versus... World. Jurassic mm. World. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh! Yes. Yeah, the Batman versus Superman. I've seen that trailer. I mean, there's not a lot of it. A little <laughs> teaser yeah. I saw. Yeah. But what I did see was, you know, decent enough. Decent yeah. Enough. Yeah. I'll see it, I guess. I don't know. I'm not super enthusiastic. Well, Jurassic not a big World Superman is, where it is. No. fan, so not as much. Mm. But Jurassic World is where it's at. That's all that really matters this summer for me. <laughs> That'll be great. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah. um, That'll hold us over until Christmas. Yeah. Mm. We can watch Star Wars. So. So let's talk about um about the life and times and projects of Martin McCann here. You're just back from Tribeca and this survivalist thing. What is the survivalist first and foremost? And will we get to see it as a broader audience? You should get to see it. I mean, that's the reason it's in Tribeca. They're trying to get some, you know, they've already picked up a distributor. Oh, um, great. And all they need, all they need need to do is um, yeah, sorry this they've got a sales agent so they just need to get a good distributor to get get it into the cinema and you know it's got some good reviews so hopefully um, someone will you know take the plunge bite the bullet and get it into some cinemas in the states you know it really do, really does deserve it and in terms of what it's about it's about uh, it's a dystopian thriller that's how it could be described mm-hmm. um, and it's set at a time after the oil collapse you know peak oil mm-hmm. oil has run done and um, obviously, civilization and uh, and life as we know it has kind of ceased to exist. Um, and there there are people living, uh, but they're living very sort of meager lives, small lives, no energy, and living off the land basically. Again, so uh, it's basically about that. It's about my character who kind of lives in a self-preserved farm, which is just about enough for one person to live. And then two women show up, um, a mother and a daughter, and I obviously. Uh, don't want them staying there because there's only <laughs> enough food for one. But when the mother offers up the daughter, um, oh in 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 a way that's you know, uh, I can't really get into it too much here. But um, <laughs> in an unseemly and, and, manner. And, and so yeah, exactly. So then my character sort of starts to uh, basically fall in love with the daughter. Could you say, or get and you know engrossed in the daughter uh, and uh, and the mother. And wants to plot to get rid of me and get you know keep the farm for oh, her gosh. and her daughter. So, so that kind of that that stuff ensues. And yeah, so it's oh kind, it's a thriller really. It's yeah, it kind sounds of a, stressful. And it sounds does sound yeah, stressful. I was yeah, like, <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> so does he? Does she get you? Anymore? Yeah, yeah, I don't, don't think he can tell us that. Don't spoil the ending. But that's what I was like. Spoiled. No spoil. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> yeah. And, the- and who else is in the in the movie with you, Martin? Uh, myself, Mia Goth, and Owen Fury. Which and Owen Fury, it's a Welsh name, but she's an Irish actress and a brilliant one. Um, White haired, um, lovely, lovely, striking actress. And Mia Goth, who is engaged to Shia LaBeouf um, uh, and is an actress. She's been in Everest and Lars von Trier's um, Nymphomaniac. Okay. Um, so she stars in that as well. And obviously myself. And uh, it's kind of like a three hander. You know, there's not yeah. a very big cast. A few people come in and out very. Um, very briefly, but it's mostly a three hundred, a three hundred film, you know. Wow! I mean, what is that like making a film that's so such a small cast? 
it's great because you, you can kind of treat it like a play. Obviously, That's true, the yeah. acting That's style true, is, yeah. is different from theater, but but it essentially you can you can feel. And he shot it, you know, he shot it, uh, the timeline in order, so you really had a good sense of what was going on and what happened previous and what's what's happening next. It, it really. It was a luxury that doesn't usually happen on film sets due to budget constraints and yeah. the size of the cast and so on and so forth. Um, so that was a real luxury and, and one that I don't think I'll, I'll experience for a while. Um, you know, to shoot a film in order with yeah. such a small cast, you know, you can really, really get down and focus on the drama and the text and, and you know, what what type of story we're trying to tell. So I think that's that's been one of the, the strongest parts of the film and it really, really does show on screen. Yeah. Did you know that going in? So was that one of the things that kind of caught your attention about it, or did that? I just, just well, I, I loved, I loved the script. I mean, it, it came, it, it got number, it came number one on the Brit list, and I think it came number four on the Black list, which is oh, basically wow. a, a list where of, of of screenplays that have not yet been made but should be made, and right. this one came number one in Britain and number four in the UK. So obviously they got. They got a small amount of money. It was only a million quid, but that you know that's all it needed to to make a you know a that type of that type of script. Obviously, you didn't have any stars in it uh, in terms of you know. Uh, well, but you. Like a, well, I mean, come on, depends on who you ask. It depends on who. You, I mean, we're like, uh, uh, hello. <laughs> well, I mean, it didn't have uh, you know Michael Fassbender in it, so we'll right. say more. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That seems like it's so interesting too. the way that um, I was reading an interview with your director talking about uh, sort of the challenge of sound in this film and, mm. uh, and how much of it had to be done like all over again afterwards, just because this is supposed to be a time in which like there's no planes, there's no cars, there's going to be no people essentially. And it's very sparse. So that require a lot of like going back in and like recording dialogue and stuff too, or... There was a lot of ADR done. Yeah. There was a lot of ADR done to get the sound right. And uh, obviously any hint of a plane would have completely yeah. <laughs> flew in the face of, of, uh, of, of the film. And I mean, when you, when you, when you listen to it back, um, all, these, all these sounds are very faint and they might not be able to be picked up by the human ear. But when you get that sound into a cinema yeah. and put it on Dolby surround sound all around the cinema, even the faintest thing can be picked up. So it's best to get the, all that scene, all that sound very clean and then obviously add all the sound effects on top of it you know because right. in yeah. real life you know walking through walking through grass is actually quite silent but when you see it on on the screen your ears your eyes kind of tend to want to hear that grass and, yeah. and hear all those special yeah. effects because we're that's what we're so used to when we go to the cinema so so redo it the, the sound this the film had to be completely sound from the start to finish uh, but and 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 you know when, when when that's done well it's something you don't recognize uh, yeah it just it's just then you take it for granted if it's done well exactly that's one of the things i'm sort of looking forward to about this is knowing that you know uh sort of being able to not pull it out because that's the idea it's supposed to be seamless but to you know go in and sort of hear what that sounds like to have that feel natural so i mean it's just such a it sounds like such an interesting uh, premise such an interesting story and a very interesting way to shoot um, and edit a film afterwards. Mm. So mm. it seems like it deserves the uh, <laughs> the praise it's been getting so yeah. far. Uh, well. But you're you're also working on so what like what's this fishbowl city that you've got going? That was a project that me and my friends did ourselves. You know, it was a low budget project. It was a passion project that we got together. And it was a story about two uh, uh, brother uh, brothers in Belfast, and you know, one kind of. Uh, one kind of gets into trouble and another kind of has to help him out and, and be there for, for him. So that was a passion project that we did and, and we got it and we got it from the start to the finish. It's it's done and dusted and hopefully we can get it onto maybe some local terrestrial television, maybe like BBC Northern Ireland to start mm -hmm. with. You know, obviously it's a low budget thing. So, I mean, to get it to get it into the cinemas would 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 take a lot more money than we than we <laughs> uh, invested in it. You know, so it's a smaller sure. it's a smaller project, and something that I did with our little company, the Imagination Bureau, and we also just created a comedy with an actor called Michael Smiley and Jared McSorley. Mm -hmm. um, Jared McSorley's been in a lot of things like War Horse and uh, and you know, Oma, right? 
that's and and yeah. Oma, yes, he starred in Oma, so he's yeah. a great actor and actually a very very good comedy actor and oh. and, and a serious actor. But he was in a in, a, in an Irish comedy called uh, Father Ted. You remember? Father oh Ted? yes, I love Father. Well, Ted. Well, he played he played Father Todd. I'm just the guy that came to Father Ted's house looking to steal, you know, <laughs> the best priest the best priest in Ireland award <laughs> from Father Ted. So it's oh, okay. he's a brilliant comedy actor and a lovely actor. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we did that with him. So we're doing little small projects and starting small and hopefully in the background, our little company will, will grow, you know. Yeah. Uh, this company is one that, that you started? Uh, yes, I started it with two of my friends, uh, Kevin Tracy and Yusef Bubetnik. And yeah, we, we, we started it just to make our own little projects and mm-hmm. um, have fun with it when we're not, you know, working uh, on our sort of careers and actually making money we can take some time out and spend <laughs> spend money on projects that won't bring us back any money whatsoever <laughs> right of course <laughs> that's i think it's good for you it's healthy right <laughs> exactly exactly and and you learn a lot more as well when you're sort of behind the scenes and you're a little bit involved in the pr- production side no matter how small it is it gives you a good idea of how the, the whole thing runs and how important every little element is and how important everyone's job is within the filmmaking process, you know, from yeah. from the runner to the executive producer to the director and writer, et cetera. Now, how important is it to you? Um, because obviously the first film, The Fishbowl City, was set in Belfast and a lot of films that you do are set in Belfast. I mean, is the city itself sort of an important um, background to a lot of the work that you do? Well, it is. It just because I know a lot of people there, and I've got friends and stuff that can help me out and give do us favors, and and also, I like to work at home because I never really get the chance to work at home, right. so it gives me a chance to work at home in Belfast. And obviously, the companies there, and it's something that you know. So, so it was a hobby that me and my two friends um, got involved in, and obviously, uh, they also work in the industry. One's a DOP, and the other's a. Uh, Actually, they're both cinematographers, really. Okay. Um, and this is something that we do when we can, when we have saved up a little bit of money and we have some time mm-hmm. and we want to get collaborative. And it's, it's, a, it's a very fun process to, 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 to build something from the ground up with your friends. Mm-hmm. It can be challenging, but very, very re- rewarding on so many levels, you know. Yeah. And is, is it different as an actor than also, like, say, putting yourself in the director's shoes in this case, or, you know, you're writing and directing on these kinds of things? Does that, do you feel like these things really, when you put them together, um, sort of enhance your role in both ways? So as being an actor or as a director, when you can work in both of those things, uh, what does that do for you as an actor? I, th- I think it, I think it, uh, it gives you a clearer understanding of everything I, I'm not too sure if it makes you a better actor but mm-hmm. it's certainly um, it's certainly you know when you're when you write you look at scripts a little bit differently as well you know I don't claim to be a good writer you know it's something that I've just <laughs> done and, and, and it's something that I do on my time off but um, when you when you write a story you, you tend to look at the scripts that you get a little bit differently and you see really where the writer's coming from and how how lines are important and how each word is important and you know what 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 is the writer trying to say here through this character sure. so you think you think a little bit deeper as well in terms of that you know mm-hmm. and then uh, sort of on the note of the the Belfast thing as well I mean uh when I was in Belfast a few years ago when we met um mm-hmm. it was I was there during the Belfast Film Festival went to a lot mm-hmm. of the uh films that they were playing there and I've watched a lot of um Northern Irish film and Irish film and so forth in general and one of the things that always strikes me is that even today in you know 2015 or whatever um like the troubles are still such a strong theme in a lot of these films. And you were just in 71 that uh, came Mm. out a month or two ago as well. Uh, Why do you think that is that this is still has such like a stronghold over a place that when you go there, you'd almost never know anything like happened, which is not to say that there's no trouble in Northern Ireland, but that the (laughs) troubles are still uh, so prevalent. I think it's just something that people like to uh, watch. You know, I think it's, um, People, people are, you know, will always, always, always be interested in, in, in a country's history, especially if it's, it's a, if it's been a, a, a troublesome one and a dark one. And the Northern Irish history is such an interesting one in the sense that the Irish have such a good, well, reputation around the world, and they're, they, they, it is a loved country. And mm-hmm. 
I think with with Northern Ireland people are people are interested in the fact that they are fighting with each other and why why are they fighting with each other is it over religion and does that make sense how can religion fight with another religion isn't it you know that kind of flies in the face of what it is people don't really understand that it's more of a a money thing and a geographical yes. thing and a, and, a, and, a, and a culture and heritage um, argument. Um, one that I don't really care for and one that I've never been, uh, you know, I've never sided with either side. I mean, I'm Irish and I class myself as Irish. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll never class myself as being British, but technically um, you could say that I'm British, but I, I'm born on the island of Ireland and that's as strong as my, my beliefs go. And that's, yeah. that's as far as I'll exercise that, right? I'll just simply state it. You know, I would never, I would never lift a gun and go out and, right. and, and, and fight someone or shoot someone over, over that belief. But, um, but it, it's, it's an interesting, it's just an interesting subject and, and, you know, people have made films about it for years. Some great films in the name of the father and the mm -hmm. crying game, yep. and and hunger, even hunger, yeah. and um, and seventy one recently. You know, there's been some bad movies made about it, but oh, um, sure. but <laughs> but uh, but the, the the films that I just mentioned are, are not are not those certainly. Yeah, and because you don't necessarily take you know so strong a political stance on. Um, on sort of the, the sectarian issues in Northern Ireland and so forth. What is it like when you play someone like in 71, where obviously you were willing to kill for this, and you're terrifying in that, by the way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, well, I, I, you so know, scary. I think it was important in terms of that character. You know, I... You know that was a that was a young Catholic guy from the Falls yeah. Road, which mm -hmm. I actually am. You know, I'm a young yeah. guy from the Falls Road. So, the, so in terms of geographically, <laughs> we were the same person. But mentally and morally, I wanted, I wanted a, you know, I didn't want to make a hero out of this guy. You know, I didn't, I don't like the idea of making a, a hero out of a, um, out of a, a murderer, essentially, right. no matter what the beliefs are. And I think, I think I wanted to play this guy in the sense that no matter where he was born, he probably <laughs> would have been getting up to these things, you know, right. um, right. So that was that was my idea, and I just didn't want to make a hero out of out of somebody that essentially brutally mur murdered a, a young British soldier, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think, and, and obviously even even on the British side, you know, with Sean Harris, he, you know, he played um, a special forces, uh, you know, sort of secret service type mm -hmm. vibe for the British forces but he also played it um he didn't make a hero out of, out of his right. character you know yeah. that was a very there were yeah. very, there were very bad men on both sides and there were very good men on both sides and i think 71 represents that well yeah i think that is really one of the strengths of that film is that you come out of it with this very this you're not rooting for a side you root for people no. right. um and root against people but there's never a point where you really feel like you're sold on some side of this conflict being correct or right um, or exactly. righteous uh, exactly. So we we both very much enjoyed watching yeah. uh, that. But you're you're also in like a lot of really heavy movies. Uh, do you ever just feel like like I'm so sick of crying on screen? Can you just make me like in a buddy cop movie or something? I'd love to do a rom com in Mauritius yeah. or Barbados, but unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> those type of scripts don't come my way. You know. Okay, so it's not like an active choice on your part. That you're like I'm only going to take the real serious fare. Just people want you for serious roles. Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, yeah, it just tends to, uh, you know, I either I, I've died in so many different ways in my <laughs> films that I can't even, I, I've lost track on, on how I've died, you know. Yeah. I've been, I've had my head chopped off. Ooh. I've been run over. I've been shot. Oh, gosh. I've been. Uh, I just had my head chopped. Oh, actually, I can't. I can't mention. Actually, I can't mention what project that. <laughs> you'll probably, no spoilers. You'll probably, yeah. No spoilers. But um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I've just I've died in so so many ways. But um, and and I've played. I tend to play either a really bad guy, or a really nice guy, and yeah. nothing in between. It's weird. <laughs> so you're just not like the guy in the office who's like meh, unassuming. Just, you're clearly no, a villain no, or a I, good guy. I've never had I've never had the chance to play the guy in the office. Hopefully that'll come. Yeah, but clearly you're also, uh, you're a little bit choosy about what you're taking. Like, you didn't just, like, take a random role in Game of Thrones or things like that. No, so. no I mean, you want to you wanna, you wanna be careful not to ch take um, a, a very small role, no matter how big the project is, you know, of a right. small, of a tiny role, like a few lines comes your way and you're thinking, well, really, do I, do I want to have a couple of, yeah. <laughs> a couple of lines in, in, 
in a big in a big project probably probably not you know it doesn't do you any favors and mm. um I, I i have been careful in, in the sense that i haven't taken any sort of trashy tv or trashy <laughs> british tv um, <laughs> that, that could maybe pigeonhole me or or yeah. or typecast me um, wait there's trashy british tv i thought all british tv was just like super classy you'd be surprised, <laughs> be surprised. go figure uh, I had no idea. But I mean, you started out like right out the gate with some, I mean, really like heavy clout because uh, Lord Richard Attenborough is the one who sort of spotted you, right? Mm. <laughs> mm, that's true. Yeah, I, I was doing a play in Belfast, uh, A Clockwork Orange. I was playing, um, I was, oh my God, why, where have I, Alex? Alex. I was playing Alex in A Clockwork like, Orange. Sorry, the main character. <laughs> Yeah, it was the main character. Sorry, my, uh, it's, it's been so long ago. It actually was a few years ago. Um, I was, I, I think it actually, it was um, 10, it was maybe nine or 10 years ago. Okay. Um, wow. That Richard Attenborough, one of his producers, I think it was maybe nine years ago, one of the producers came and watched me in that play and, and said, look, Richard Attenborough's coming here to make a movie. And I just knew, I just remembered him as, you know, uh, as the old guy in... Uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> For everyone Obviously. of our age group, I think that's first thing. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but you know, it's so sad that he's gone and I'll yeah. always appreciate him and always love him for for the chance that he gave me and I'll just always remember him so fondly as a as a lovely loving man, very sharp man and yeah. and a and a serious talent that could never be Will never, will he? There'll never be another Richard Attenborough. That's that's an absolute fact. There'll never be another one of him. Yeah, and I mean, for as you said, like a lot of us remember him as like the old guy from Jurassic Park. But his directing work, I mean, is sort of like unmatched. It's yeah, yeah. it's mm, incredible. Mm. Well, he beat he beat E. T. with Gandhi to the Best Picture yeah. Oscar. You know, and and I mean that's how that's how great Gandhi was as a feature film. You know, he had a he had two hundred and fifty thousand Indian people show up for to be extras in, in, in the funeral wow. scene of Gandhi. So, you know, directing to a crowd of 250,000 people is no easy task. Uh, no. I can only imagine. So, you know, I mean, imagine, imagine that, imagine 250,000 people showing up to be in your in your film, and every single one of them are in that sort of wide shot yeah. at the funeral. You know? um, and and I, I, there's a very famous... Um, very famous quote, I think. I, I'm, not, I'm probably going to quote it wrong, but <laughs> that's all right. um, it, he, he, he was he's known to have shouted through the um, speaker speaker form or the the the, the speaker uh, uh, to the to the crowd. Gandhi's dead. You're all sad. You know that was <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. efficient directing right there. Gandhi is dead. You're all sad. <laughs> you know, that worked. Yeah, straight to the point. Yeah. Or, or was it Gandhi's dead cry? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think Either one of those is like... Cry. That's perfect. I oh, love that. <laughs> um, and then, like, because of this, also, rumor has it, aka IMDb has it, that he was the one who called uh, Spielberg to have you uh, audition for The Pacific. Is that accurate? That's... That's kind of, it's not, it's not, it wasn't actually like that. I, I was, I was auditioning for the Pacific in okay. London. Um, and I met a girl called Meg Lieberman in 22 and they had offered me to go to LA to do the last, the last round of auditions and meet Steven Spielberg. So when I got that close, I decided, well, why not, you know, why not give myself more of an opportunity? And I, mm -hmm. I called Richard Attenborough and I says, look, I've, I've got a meeting with Steven Spielberg here and in a couple of weeks time, can you, Put, either put in a good word or show him closing the ring um, just so it gives me a better chance and he did and I and I went along and I met Steven Spielberg and he I, they, they had told me to stay in my Texan accent but when I, when I met <laughs> Steven Spielberg and he said oh hi I'm Martin it's nice to meet you I'm going to watch your movie Richard sent and I thought oh my god am I going to do I, do I stay Texan or do I <laughs> Break, break out in a, in a broad Belfast brogue and I broke out in a broad Bel Belfast brogue and thought I'd completely messed up the audition from the start so but but yeah no he, he sent along he sent along the film and, and Richard and, and Steven Spielberg watched it and I did a decent audition and and they cast, they cast me in, in the Pacific and I went to Australia to film it for 10 years or 10, 10 years 10 months <laughs> holy cow <laughs> ten, ten, 10 years it was 120 episodes no uh, no, I went. I went to Australia to film it for ten months, so it was one of the greatest uh, experiences of my life. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, not to harp on something from 10 years ago, but this is like one of Kristen and my favorite things on the planet. We're obsessed with Band of Brothers and Pacific. Um, And so, I mean, just the, like, 10 months of filming something must be intense anyway, for something that's 10 episodes as well. Like, how harrowing is it to be in something like that, though? Like, did you really, there's explosions, there's, I mean, just crazy gunfire, everything. What does it feel like to be in something like that? Um, it feels great. I mean, obviously, I mean, great is probably not the, the word that you want to use for something so morbid, but um, right. But it's it's big, it's epic, and you know, those boys do it right. Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg know exactly mm-hmm. what they're at. And I met, I got to meet a lovely man called Tim Van Patten, who I have a lot of time for and a lot of love for, and he he directed some of the episodes, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, he works heavily with HBO. You know, he's directed. You know, uh, Sex and the City and Game of oh. Thrones, and Boardwalk Empire, and wow. you know he's he's wow. he's one of their go-to guys, and he's a great director. So I got quite close with him, and got the chance to bring my brother and sister to Australia, and my mother also, oh, which was fun. nice. And uh, and yeah, it was just a great great gig, and certainly a gig that um, is is strongly etched in, in in my memory in terms of like you know it was a career shifting gig and and Mm -hmm. and i learned a lot i learned i learned an awful lot on that gig would you call this probably your greatest like learning experience as an actor or is there some other picture that you really feel like is like really a defining moment for you i think probably the survivalist will be a defining moment you know uh uh in terms of you know um just in terms of the script and you know the style of acting and the fact that i had to lose a lot of weight for it um and it was it was a very it was a chop it was a tough role you know it was challenging from the start to finish you know yes it's physically grueling emotionally (laughs) whereas the pacific you know i i loved it i probably i mean (laughs) i would have loved if if it had happened to me if i was maybe two or three or four years older i would have been able to handle it better and um, really really yeah i feel i feel i i feel i was a little bit too young um emotionally and mentally to to to, to, to go and work like that on a, on such a massive show when I didn't really have a lot of experience um but it, you know it kind of it kind of it was that that was my film school you know the right. Pacific was my film school yeah it really was oh, Kristen you're kind of uh your mic feels very quiet my mic does yeah can you move it closer sorry about that <laughs> no can worries that's yeah, better. Yep, yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and switching gears a little bit, I think it's also worth talking about that you were just in an Oscar-nominated short. Heyo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How? I mean, that's the other thing. Is so like, darling. okay, it was so darling. By the way, yeah. I just it. Did Did you like it? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> it was just. I just loved everything about it. They were just so wonderful. Those little boys were so cute. Yeah. I, I couldn't know. handle it. I. I was, I like, know. sad when it was over. I was like, wait, but then we should see more, right? I mean, not, I guess what else more was there going to be to the story? But I'm like, I kind of just want to watch them him grow up. And even though yeah. that would be I'd watch the show, that. you know. Me too. It was, yeah, anyway. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a lovely, it was a lovely uh, project to do. And I'm quite friends, quite chummy with the director, Michael. And uh, I'm just so happy that that happened for him. And he won the BAFTA as well. It, it won the BAFTA right. and it got nominated for the Oscar. So, I mean, you know, as, 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 uh, you know, as far as doing well with a short film it pretty you know it did it did, it did pretty well mm-hmm. do you set goals for yourself in ter- not goals per se but i mean is there a part of you that's like i want like a bafta someday or i want an oscar or something like that or is that just kind of like uh so far out of your mind you don't even think about it it's just i just go and i do the job and do my I thing. think it's important just to focus on doing the job, and my my only ever concern is where where will the next job come from, and mm-hmm. and 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 how well will I do it, and what will I learn, right. how will I use each role and each, you know, every time I watch a film, I don't really like to watch myself back because I'm too busy critiquing what I've done and trying sure. to, you know, wish wish the time back so I could do a little <laughs> little bit different. But with every with every painful performance I watch back, I get a little bit better as as an actor, you know, and and with each with each role. I'm growing as an actor. I feel, I really do feel I'm just at the start, you know, I, I've got yeah. that feeling that even though I've been doing it a few years, I feel now really I'm just kind of trying to find, I'm for the first time really finding my feet uh, as a performer, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I hope this is just the beginning of, of a long line of things and uh, because you're, 
you're fun to watch. Let's be real. We've uh, we've both seen a lot of your uh, your films and work, and uh, so we we definitely wish you a, a long career. And that one of these days, you're just you're gonna be a household name. We're just waiting for it. <laughs> and we'll be like, cool. Remember that one time we had Martin McCann on, and it was like so cool before. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no one will believe us. So like, yeah, well, but we'll have proof. See. Yeah, you'll have proof. We'll you'll have, have proof. proof. But what? you won't have in, you won't have me on my nightgown thing. No. <laughs> That's, That's the thing. So... We don't have the image. We could just have someone no. who's a really good uh, fake Martin McCann right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank yep. you so much for talking to us. This has been an absolute delight. No, well, no, I appreciate it. I appreciate you know he's wanting to talk to me, and I appreciate you watching the stuff that I do, and I hope that I can do more stuff and and. Uh, you know, and, and if he's ever need to talk in the future, do do make contact. And um, you've got my Skype address, and you've got my number, so stay in touch. Absolutely, we, really we well. will take you up on that. And anything else you want to uh, throw out to the world, a plug for anything, or a final word of wisdom for the audience? Oh no, no, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a wise man, so I don't, I don't plan to be. So, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. You know, I think it takes a wise man to know he's not a wise man. So <laughs> there you go. We'll grant you that. Well, thank you so much, and enjoy your evening, Martin. You too. All right, girls. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye. That was delightful, wasn't it? That was so delightful. Why, well, you guys? He's just wonderful. Is he not? You're welcome, world. You're welcome, world. That happened, and it was great. Unfortunately, uh, we had, like, video issues or whatever, so um, you don't get to see him in his house coat. House coat? I don't even know what that is. No, but apparently it makes him look like the Grim Reaper. Yeah. So is it like a robe? I think it's like... Like a robe, maybe? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I should what? go get one now, though, because apparently they're cool. Yeah, they're they're a thing. So I have a hood. Probably, there's a hood. It's It sounds really comfortable. We should it do does. that. It but... sounds like you don't have to wear pants with it, so... Oh, that's my favorite kind of clothing. Clothing you don't have to wear pants in. <sighs> So you guys, we hope you enjoyed that. We had a we had a blast, and you should check out the Survivalist when it becomes available. Um, also, Fishbowl City is available on the interwebs. Um, if you want something non-stressful, you should check out Boogaloo and Graham. Boogaloo Graham. That's also available somewhere on the interwebs the as Oscar well. Oscar nominated shorts. Uh, yeah, there's. I mean, in the Pacific, we've told you a million times to watch. Seventy one, we've told you a million times, million times. to watch. Um, How many more times we can tell you, you guys? Yeah, you just get it it's time to start listening to us. Is all we've been saying. Yeah. No, people have. We've gotten feedback from people who have watched the things we've talked about. That is and, true. Um, Long our track record, yeah. For example, yeah, our track record is great. Yeah. So that's all we're saying. Anyways. Thank you so much for listening. Um, it was uh, it was it episode sixty or did I get the number it wrong? It was episode sixty. Okay. So we had a big episode sixty, you guys. Yeah, we do good on the tens. Our milestones are on point. I mean, I want to brag. They really I are. Do. Actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> our milestones, like my intros, are on point. Are on. Okay, see, and what have I been saying? See, yep. when we have other people, they also think they're great. I've so. been affirmed, so I feel great about it. So follow us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, anywhere that you can find us. Just go ahead and click that subscribe button, and you can listen to us on the reg, and it'll be yeah. great. We'll be super happy to have you. Follow us on Twitter and make sure that you uh, talk to us. Let us know uh, what you think. If you have ideas for guests that we should get, then just tell us and we'll see what we can do. You know, I mean, like, we're not going to get we're not going to get Brad Pitt or something, you know, like, let's temper our expectations. But, you know, let's uh, let's shoot. Shoot for, shoot the, for the stars. The... Yeah. Or Even if you miss, you'll like land a... amongst. Wait, that's not right. Maybe Sh more like shoot for like a one story high window. Really high window. Although we managed it, to get Martin McCann, so we're we're on our way up. That that's is all true. I'm saying. And we probably should mention, even though he didn't want to mention his own plug, you can find him on Twitter, which is how yes. we found got this little dealio going. So it's um, all one word: Martin McCann one um, the at Twitter. Number or, one. The number one. The the numeral. Numeral. Um, so you can find him there. You can follow him, and he will tweet and stuff. And he's like really nice on it. So yeah. It's good. Why don't you? Come on, people. I know. Listen to us. Yeah, but you can obviously also find us there, too. Yes. Well, sometimes we tweet. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I feel so fucking... Yeah, we're just in a weird, My like, right mode now. My is so sweaty from that it entire is. interaction. I know. And I told you I'm, I'm wearing like, men's deodorant, so I don't know why I'm still sweating. This is whew, crazy. All right. So <laughs> with that, for the Electric Fan Cave, I'm Corrigan Vaughn. And I'm Kristen Lateral. Peace out, everybody. Take it easy.
What <laughs> was? I don't know. I did this. Great. Um, because I met you at it wasn't at the standoff or a whole lot of soul. Yes, uh, that's the one. After party. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I have a picture that's of it right. where you're double fisting <laughs> beers. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and did you enjoy your time in Ireland when you were there? Oh, always. I've I've been to Northern Ireland several times and love it every time. So. Mm. It's a good place. It's a... It is a good place. It's got you know it's gotten better over the years, obviously with the troubles and stuff that they've yes. they've all went away. And Northern Ireland's a much more peaceful place, so it's a great place to live. And and yeah. you know that obviously Game of Thrones, a lot of Game of Thrones is being filmed there. Yep. And yep. A lot of a lot of great stuff is happening, and and, and you know in the. In our wee small town called Belfast, so it's good. It's it's nice to be a part of it, you know. Yeah, and that's what everyone wants to show you when you go there too. Is like, look, we have Game of Thrones here. Oh, yes. I know, I know. And then if you're an if you're an actor and you say you're from Belfast and they say, are you in Game of Thrones? And you say no, and they're like, oh, Jesus, you must be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.